All right, boxing fans, we're here with five division champion Nonito Donaire, and I can't even tell you how many belts. Do you, do you have track of how many belts you've won overall? I think nine or ten. Oh my gosh. Well, we're at the WBO convention here in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and uh, Nonito, thank you for taking the time to talk with us, and how are you enjoying the convention so far? Man, you know, it's my first convention, and, and, and uh, it's incredible. You know, it's, I thought that I was going to be here being in the boxing environment, that it's going to be like boxing mindset, but I'm actually pretty chill having a good time. Yeah? So you, you haven't been at any organization's no, conventions first before? Time, first time in, for everything, uh, wow. convention-wise, in, in terms of, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. That's great. It's good to see you here. Um, so you are, what did I think, fifth, four months uh, uh, from your last fight with Inoue. Uh, first of all, how are you feeling? I feel great, man. You know, it was just one of those things that I'm always willing to take. You know, it's, 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 it's either you kill me, I kill you, that's it. You know, and, and I did want the fight to end the way the last fight did. And so I took I took measure to, uh, to create something, but unfortunately it didn't go my way. But I'm not worried about that because, you know what, I did out there to make a big difference. And the difference was, <laughs> unfortunately, was my disadvantage, but I'll probably do it again if, if I'm given that, that second chance, you know. It's because I I, uh, I don't want the same fight to happen the first time, you know. It's because I know I can do more than that, and I'm willing to uh, uh, make a big difference. Whether it's a, it's a loss or a win, you know, I'm always going to make something different from the first one. Um, but aside from that, I am best, man. You know, I was grateful that the fight happened really fast, and and there was really no damage in my in my body or in my brain. You know, and and, and here I am. You know, here I am having a good time. Now, we were talking a little bit earlier uh, off camera, and you were saying that kind of on a daily basis, you kind of go through these. Uh, I'm going to do it again. Or I'm not sure, and you know, depending on the day, um, is that how it's been going? With you for the past four months, well, or it's, it's more of it's more of I have nothing else to do. Although I do have a goal, which is to be a, a champion again, and and the ultimate goal again is, is to be the undisputed champion. You know, and then maybe I don't know what happens after that, but that's something that keeps me up in the morning, keep running in the morning, and and giving me purpose. Now, what's been interesting is that you know you climbed from world championship level at flyweight all the way to featherweight and then you worked your way back down again which a lot of people don't do uh you know do you have a, a weight division that you would target again or does it depend on who's the champ in the division i, I think i think the the banner weight is really where my weight is but i can also drop down to fly super flyweight wow you know, and and for me i call myself a five division but some people don't count the interim and so I want to make it a legitimate, and, and so if there is an opening to a, a world title fight um, at the at the super flyweight division, because that's where you had your your interim WBA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, some people do uh, do not count those interim um, those interim titles. Um, so right now, I was looking at your record. You have forty nine fights. I know a few fighters. Uh, uh, Christy Martin being one of them who well in her case she wanted to get her 50th win one more fight for you win lose or draw would be 50 fights is that uh, something that you've thought about as I far as a even, number I never even saw what my record is I know yeah. that I lost seven times 42 and 7 yeah, yes. so you're so, hanging at 49 fights yeah, right now yeah so um, you know I, I don't look at the numbers I just know that when it's time it's time yeah. know, and when uh in this moment in time, I love what I do. I get up in the morning, I'm, I'm running, even though I don't have any sleep, like being in the convention and hanging out with everybody, getting a couple of drinks here and there. And, and sometimes you don't sleep, you know? And then, but I do wake up, like to this morning, I probably only have an hour of sleep, but four or five o'clock in the morning, I got up, I did my run, I did my, my shadow boxing, I did my workout, and I'm gonna do it again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um. How much do you pay attention to your peers in whatever your division you're fighting in? Like, uh, for example, right now, there is a chance for Inoue to clean up that whole division in his fight with Paul Butler and, and collect all, all four belts. Do you look at your peers in the different divisions, and does that kind of factor into who you think you're going to target? 
or do you really want a challenge and not looking for like, oh, that guy's a beatable champ, but you want the toughest no, fight I mean, out there? I, I lost a chance already to, to, uh, to fight with Inoue in this division. Um, but I do pay attention to the division to see, to conquer. That's pretty much it, to conquer the division in, in terms of becoming a student. That's why I fought him in the first place, you know, and I'll fight him again if I have to when, when, when acquiring all the belts, if, if, if it needs be. Um, but ultimately for me, I pay attention because of the fact that I have one goal in mind and becoming in the street is that. And, you know, I think back a few years ago when you uh, kind of entered as a, kind of as a dark horse, the, uh, the um, World Boxing Super Series tournament there, and um, yeah, I mean, I think it was fair to call you a dark horse, and and you ended up, uh, you know, winning a title in in that, and um, and uh, that that was pretty amazing for you. You know, I was blessed, but people don't understand that. As much as I'm very tall for the division, I was kind of like a a Condora, right, or or a a, a uh, Corrales. Right. I've always been a smaller guy, very very skinny. And that's why making the 118 and 115 is easy for me because I've always been skinny. I've just been fighting to, to chase the likes of, of, of Santa Cruz or, or Maris at that time, you know. And, and that's how I got, I ended up at, at the featherweight. Right. Um, but um, ultimately, my real weight is, is, is always been in the 115, 118. Mm -hmm. So, um, I talked with Inoue once. Uh, a couple of years ago at the IBF convention in Macau and he said that he could see himself going as high as 122 and and no more than that and he actually if I'm not mistaken he he skipped at least one division and he, and he kind of hopped right up to Bantamweight so he, he probably could have won some other titles but uh, how do you think he would fare at 122 having been in the ring with him twice? I mean there's I think a couple guys that would give him a problem but I think that he'll do well still because he does have that power like I did. Mm -hmm. Even though I was a smaller guy, you know. Um, but I think he'll do well. Yeah. Uh, you know, he knows the fundamental of boxing, which is hit and not get hit. And, and, and when you know how to do it well, you can win a lot of fights. No, no. Backing up to your your two fights with him, um, what do you think? Where did the difference lie in the, in the results of the two fights as far as, was it more of something he did better the second time around? Because you definitely seemed prepared and you had a game plan for the second fight, so it doesn't seem like the answer would be, oh, it's what you didn't do, but what, what do you think of you, when you look back well, at it? I look back into the first fight and I know I did well, but it wasn't good enough and I need to change something. And so I had to make those jump, right? To, to make a different fight because going into into distance with them is going to be a detriment to me, you know, in, in my physical uh, and compared to him. So I needed something different and I came up with something different, you know, unfortunately it didn't happen the way we wanted to go, but I did, I, I think I just got caught up with, with, with fighting because in, in, in our uh, training camp, it was, about, it was about boxing and being smart, you know, and I think... <laughs> <laughs> I, the moment that I got in, I just wanted to brawl. <laughs> so it wasn't was that you had the wrong game plan? the opposite of what I wanted but to do. But you didn't follow yeah, the game so, plan. So, you know, my wife was really pissed off. It's because I'm like, we trained to box. We trained to, to counter. We trained to not get caught. Since you're a taller guy and you're fast too, you know. But I just I just got caught up with, with, with fighting. And that's something that, for myself, I had to realize that... Um, in order for me to prolong my career in boxing, I had to be smart about it. You know, what I did in that fight wasn't smart. I didn't, I didn't follow the game plan. I didn't follow the, the strategy that we did and worked really well in sparring. You know, granted sparring and fight is different, but I know that it would have worked considering uh, the discipline, if I did have the discipline to follow the, the, the path. But unfortunately, I'm more of a fighter than, than, than a guy than a general. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, you told me earlier you're going to be 40 in two weeks. <laughs> or so. Or so, yeah. thereabouts. Um, <laughs> but I feel like I'm 21, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you feel like uh, while you're kind of, you know, chilling out right now, 
four months after that fight. Um, do you feel like time's on your side, uh, or do you think it's a detriment the longer you wait, the less likely it'll be for you to get back in the ring? So far, the more rest that I got, the better and fresher that I become. Um, I, I do believe that, that with proper health and proper discipline, I can prolong my career longer than I would think I could go. You know, and, and that's pretty much what I have to do every day is be disciplined enough to what to, to be healthy, what I eat is right. Um, uh, and the time that I take to train um, is, is not, 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 not that youth of, of pushing and pushing and pushing. I'll push, but in a smart way. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's, that, that's something that I've learned growing up into this game. The older that I got, the more that I become smarter in training. And do you feel like... So you obviously, at this point, with these many years of experience, you have ring IQ that you've gained. Where do you feel um, the other necessary attributes, such as like speed and reflexes, lie in, in addition to your, your ring IQ? I, I think I'm blessed with, with the physical ability to, uh, to, for, my, for my speed and my reflex to not decline over the years. Usually you see a lot of that declining. You know, and, and I I believe that I still have all the reflex, you know, and, and you know, it may not be or perhaps it may be the same, but I know that I can see things still in sparring and in, in the fights. And, um, you know, uh, it's just, again, it's just a matter of, of believing what I'm capable of. You know, the, the people get old fast because they believe they get old. You know, and, and when they believe that they're getting old, you are what you speak. Yeah. Now, normally, you know, George Foreman showed everybody years ago that uh, at least it, in the heavyweight division, you can be, you know, in your 40s and, and still want a title and compete at that level. And uh, historically, guys your age and in your weight class, uh, that's ancient to be, still yeah. be fighting at the lighter weights. But you seem to be an anomaly as far as that <laughs> mindset goes. And I think that's what it is, is the mindset. Knowing that in the time that that people follow up, so when they were 33, they tend to feel that they were getting old. By the time they're 35, they were old, you know. And I still don't believe that I'm old. That's the thing is, I still believe that I I have this incredible speed, incredible using, you know. Um, regardless of what people or, or 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 the generation have said for me to follow. It's just that I don't feel it that way. You know, I've always felt that, you know, and I do I do have a, a, a um, I have to be performing in training camp in order for me to continue. And because of that, I'm training harder because I gotta perform. If I don't perform, you know, I can say that, you know what, my team can, and I, and especially my wife can say, or my trainer can say that, hey, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. I think it's time to go. So I don't want that to happen. Right. <laughs> I think this is why I'm so disciplined when it comes down to a lot of things in my life now. So obviously, you know, everybody's career, especially an athlete's career, um, has to end at some point. What will it be, what will it take for you to make that decision, whether it's, I mean, there could be a couple of things, reaching your goal of being undisputed champ, and if so, would you then say, okay, I'm going to go out on top and retire as undisputed champ? Or would it be, you know, a devastating beating or a series of losses? Or what do you, or could it be All any of those, of those are things? Valid. Yeah. All of those are valid. If somebody beat the crap out of me, I'm done, right? If I'm not doing too good in, in the training camp where I promise I should, then I'm done. No questions asked. Um, if I am to, uh, to win, you know, winning everything else, that I deem to, uh, to to make a goal on to you know uh, becoming a undisputed champion. You know I think I'm done as well. You know all of those times. I mean I do love the sports, but I wanted to have an ending where it's uncontested. That there is no doubt for me to go. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily a timeline you're giving, but just uh, some outcomes that you're going to be looking at and yeah. seeing what happens. Right. Exactly. And mm -hmm. then I think that. I won't feel right if I left the sport knowing that I got more to offer. I wouldn't feel right if I know that 
or if I need the support and know that I could do more and become more and, and just because people are telling me that I shouldn't then I, you know, that would haunt me for the rest of my life. Alright. So you said earlier that, you know, you might be interested in kind of cleaning up the misconceptions about the validity of your title at 115. Uh, there's um, round three coming up uh, in 115 between um, Chocolatito. I like that fight with Estrada. Yeah. Estrada and Chocolatito. And I, that's you like to fight with them. What about throwing yourself in the picture? How, how do you see yourself matching up with either of those two guys, whoever wins? I think I'll do really well with them. I mean, not to to, to uh, underestimate their capability. They're legends. Right. Legendary fighters, you know? And, and I got to give that respect. But, of course, I'm not going to downplay what I've done as well. You know? And, and I think I'll do really well with both of those guys. Well, maybe we'll see you in with the winner. Why not? <laughs> right? Well, we'll see you throw Let's your hat in the ring. Let's make it happen, baby. Let's make it happen. <laughs> All right. Well, as I said to you earlier, uh, regardless of when you retire and, and what the outcome is, I know we're going to see you in uh, the hallowed halls of Canastota uh, sooner or later, I'm sure, on your first ballot. Uh, I look forward to seeing you there, and I, and I know a lot of boxing fans around the world who will be watching this interview uh, feel the same. Man, I'm, I'm looking forward. I've always, I've always just been very gracious, uh, very respectful to, uh, to the Hall of Fame, you know, in Minnesota. They've always invited me and I've always been able to have a schedule during those times. Um, but when time comes, I will be looking forward for, for the moment that they, they induct me into it. All right. Well, Monito, thank you again for being gracious with your time here. Enjoy the rest of the convention and I look forward to seeing you if not at another convention, then in Canastota in, yes. uh, in due time. Oh, I would love to, man. I would love to. That's something that's in my bucket list, you know. I would love to. And I, I love the fact that just, just being here, seeing everybody, as well as, as, you know, in the Hall of Fame, seeing the fighters that I look up to and, and being around them, I mean, that's, that's a blessing in itself. And uh, any any last words to uh, your your large list of fans I know that are out there? I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you for, for supporting me throughout, and I'm always going to give everything that I got. Um, but there are more more things to come in the coming years, so stay tuned to that. All right. Thank you, thank Nonito. You.